Hi, my name's Phil from BeerCreation.com. Welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about pots and exactly what size pot you need for your first brew day. So stick around to find out. So for most of us, we start our brewing career with one of those extract kits that come from the local brew shop or from online. And they often give you a lot of the equipment that you need, but not many of them actually give you the pot or the brew kettle that you actually need to boil your wort in. So the question is exactly how big a pot do you need? And will you always need the same pot in the future? Well, that's what I want to talk about today. So let's get into that now. So when it comes to the size of the pot, and here I'm really talking about volume, you've got to consider a few things. Well, the first thing really is the yield of the beer that you're going to be producing with the kit or the recipe that you're following today. Now, that might change in the future, but let's say the most common yield is about five gallons. So with that, you've got to consider the difference between the pre-boil and the post-boil amount that you'll be left with. So during boiling, you're going to lose some liquid from evaporation. It's called the evaporation rate. Um, that's generally around about one to two gallons. And it really depends on things like the um, ambient temperature of your brewery, uh, as well as maybe the energy that you're putting into um, the heat source that you're using. So as a general rule, you're going to use about one or two gallons. But there's also something else to consider. So when you're boiling, you're going to experience something called the hot break. This is when proteins are sort of um, agitated and push the top of the uh, the surface of wort. And also, you know, your wort's going to be bubbling up and it can even try to boil over. Now, some people think, oh, that's kind of yucky stuff. It looks a bit like egg. Maybe I don't want that in my beer. But in fact, we want all those proteins to fall back down inside the beer because later on proteins are quite good for things like head retention of your beer so we want to avoid at all costs that we have a ball over so with that you need an extra little bit of volume or headspace so you can stop your wall doing that so as a general rule i would say that if you have a five gallon yield you need about two and a half to three gallons um, of extra volume in your pot. So that's something like nine to 11 liters. However, we're not always going to be brewing the same amount of beer. As you progress in your career as a brewer, you're probably gonna to want to up the, uh, the yields that you have. You know, perhaps you're going to be brewing for a large group of people, you know, Christmas, uh, a birthday party, something like that. So the thing is you don't want to limit yourself to a pot now. Um, possibly you're going to want to upgrade it later so why not upgrade it now another thing to consider is the function of the pot what are you actually going to be using it for well for most cases um, a pot is generally going to be what's called a brew kettle so this is where you boil the water up um, you add the hops and things like that however if you move from extract brewing to maybe all grain brewing or even brew in a bag methods like that you might need to use the pot in different ways um, this same pot could double up as a mash tun you could also use it in the lautering process um, where you sort of rinse the grain bed in order to extract all those fermentable sugars so as a general rule I'd say go for a pot with a spigot or tap or faucet whatever you want to call it and a built-in temperature gauge like this you'll find it very useful for uh, controlling the temperature of your wort obviously during the boil and the mashing phase but also it's very easy to uh, rack the wort and transfer it from pot to pot or into your keg or bottles or whatever you're using so if we go back and talk about mashing here so it, if you're mashing you're going to be trying to convert starches into sugar by heating water and keeping it at a constant temperature for about an hour so here you're going to need to have enough volume within the pot for that stage but later on you're going to be um, rinsing the grain so this is called sparging and here you have additional water that you'll be introducing from another vessel called a hot liquor tank so you've got to be sh you've got to make sure that you have enough volume in the pot not only to deal with the mashing but also the additional water that you're going to be adding to it so that's going to make up pretty much 
the full complement of your pre-boiled wort. So that's an extra one or two gallons on top of the yield that you're actually hoping for. So of course you can't do this in a pot that's smaller than the yield that you're, uh, that you're targeting. In the same breath, if you're going down the brew in a bag method where you actually do the mashing of the grains in a brewer's bag and you simply lift that off and then uh, you're left with pretty much exactly how much water you need for the, uh, the next process of boiling. Um, sometimes you can sparge uh, the uh, brew in a bag uh, method. Um, it's not that common. I've actually written a, an article about this which explains when and why you might do that. So head over to my website and check that out. Um, I'll put a, a link in the description. But um, it just in this case you've got to consider how much additional room do I need because you've got to account for that loss for evaporation. So what's the difference between getting a 5 gallon, an 8 gallon, a 10, 15, 20 gallon pot? Well, um, the one I've got here is a 10 gallon uh, pot and that's about 40 litres. And the difference between this and an 8 gallon, well, obviously it's a 2 gallon volume, but it's things like the cost. Well, um, yes, pots are quite expensive and a 10, a 10 gallon pot is going to be more expensive than an 8 gallon pot. But the difference isn't really that large. You're talking about maybe 20 or 30 dollars. And even a 20 gallon pot, it's not going to be twice the price of this one. So the thing is, I would always say that if you are, at the moment you're dealing with five gallon yields, always consider that you're going to up that in the future. So maybe add an extra three, four gallons on top of that, even double the size. That way, you're not always going to be upgrading and spending more and more money. So it's better to invest now rather than having to sort of buy an extra pot every single time that you want to up your yield. Another thing to consider is the actual energy it takes. I mean, 40 liters, if I'm going to be uh, heating that amount of liquid, it takes a heck of a lot of energy to do that. Um, most of us, when we start, we're going to be brewing on the stovetop in the kitchen. Um, and depending on the type of stovetop you've got, if it's electric or gas, and even uh, from city to city, it really depends on how much energy you can get out of it. Sometimes you're just going to be limited. You're not going to be out. You're not going to be able to actually heat up that amount of liquid. So for some of us, you're going to be limited to one gallon yields. But if you've got a garden, if you've got some outside space, even if you've got a communal area in your around your apartment block. You can get yourself a propane burner which has a lot more energy than your average stovetop and that's going to help you increase the amount of beer that you can actually produce. However, you've also got to consider the weight of these pots. Now not just the weight of its, uh, the pot when it's empty but actually how much uh, the liquid that you're heating up and that you're dealing with actually weighs. So something like five gallons of beer, that's going to weigh about 44 pounds, around 20 kilos. So, you know, you can go up with that. If, you, if you're dealing with 10 gallons, you're, you're looking at something like 88 pounds, uh, you know, 40 kilograms. Now, I don't know if you work out, but that's quite heavy to be sort of lugging around. So this is another reason why having a spigot is a really good idea, because it makes transferring liquid much easier. So another thing that you need to consider when buying a pot is actually the metal that it's made of. So stainless steel is by far the most popular sort of metal out there and it has a lot of advantages. Um, one of the main things is it's easy to clean and it's also a lot cheaper than other metals at the moment. However, it hasn't got the best conductivity of metals out there. Something like aluminium has a better heat sort of exchange capacity than stainless steel. And even copper is better than aluminium. However, these metals, um, they're both more expensive and they also sort of tarnish um, a lot more. They're, they're diff more difficult to clean. Um, and also things like aluminium, that oxidizes when you use sort of regular cleaning products. So although copper and aluminium are desirable, I would say stick to the stainless steel. You're going to have far fewer headaches in the end. Okay, well, we're not all made of money and we don't always have the space to buy a huge pot. So what's the alternative to buying a 10 gallon pot like I did? 
Well, there's a few methods that you can uh, look up. And if you head over to my website at beercreation.com slash pots, I've written an article all about these details. So one of the methods that you can use is just to split up the boil. So this is basically boiling up the wort in smaller uh, pots, maybe two or three different pots, say something like a two gallon uh, capacity pot, you might use that two or three times to produce five gallons. Um, or if you've got several pots, then you brew it, uh, you boil it up at the same time. Um, this can work uh, for some people if you've got more than one pot. Another way is if you're dealing with a pot that is just about five gallons, and that's the sort of maximum capacity of the pot, you can have a second smaller pot of boiling water next to it and sort of every 10 minutes just add a little bit of water in making sure that it doesn't boil over and that way you can keep the same volume of liquid uh, bubbling over. My advice is always buy a bigger pot than you need right now. So a good size for most brewers is about 10 gallons or a 40 litre pot. That's going to see you right for many years and uh, unless you really increase your yield, about 10 gallons is okay for most brewers. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it with a friend and leave me a comment. And also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss out on any videos that I upload in the future. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.